Phone, computer, and internet. I am Iron Batman. I uh, just want to get some thoughts out here into the world. I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing. I'm on my way to work. I'm not going to be looking at the camera much, but I just want to talk because God knows talking is what we do in our daily lives. Um, so I watched Kenobi episode 3 today <coughs> on Disney Plus, and it is incredible. It's so fucking incredible. Um, I, I just love it. I love seeing so many of the connections. There's tiny attention to detail references to the original trilogy. Um, and Ewan McGregor is just the best. The first two episodes of Kenobi I thought were fine. Uh, nothing spectacular about them, but I think we were all waiting for episode three, at least the return of Vader. Um, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to where, where the show is bringing it. it. In preparation for this show, I've been watching, or not watching, I've been listening to the Kenobi audiobook. I have a physical copy of the book that I read a few years ago, but um, I, I, I've been listening to it on my way to work and stuff, and it's, it's oh, that's, that's the kind of, uh, those are the kind of vibes that I've been expecting for this show, and I'm getting a little bit of it. I want more. But, uh, man, this, the, the first couple episodes were, were, were good. I love seeing Ewan McGregor back, Hayden Christensen, uh, in the, in the Back to Hank reminiscent of, uh, Star Wars theories fan film. I think that fan film's fine. I have some problems with it. More just the, the acting. I think Palpatine's acting is really funny in that. Uh, he's like, who holds you back? But that's another discussion for another time. Um, I don't know, I, I'm just trying this out, seeing what'll happen with, with, uh, uh, talking to a camera and maybe putting some YouTube videos out there, so we'll see. I'm more doing this for myself than anything, because I feel like I have a lot of stuff to talk about, uh, just to, to voice my concerns and everything. I don't know how much storage I have on my phone right now, so we'll see if I end up stopping at any point. I may check my camera here. But really, this is just going to be a rant video while I drive to work. I was going to do it <clears throat> while I was driving to get some lunch, but my, my phone has like zero storage on it right now. I really need to clear that out. So anyways, I'm just going to be talking, talking about Kenobi, talking about Star Wars, talking about the world right now. Maybe not too much of the world right now because yes, anybody that listens to this probably doesn't want to hear about it, uh, at least not from another rando person on the internet, but, uh, we'll see. If it comes up, it comes up. Um, yeah, so this episode of Kenobi was just fantastic. My brother and I were watching it this morning, and uh, we were on the edge of our seats, um, the entire time, and so, what, what happened? Um, for whatever reason, I was really keying into some attention to de detail aspects, of like, it, it reminded me a lot of um, like Jews hiding from Nazis. Obviously, that that's where uh, the idea of the stormtroopers, their name, and, and just the the physical presence and the aesthetics of the Empire. That it's meant to evoke that. And this episode, like, it really brings out the stormtroopers are these Nazi, um, and the Inquisitors as well, the, they're, they're, uh, officers that are, like, hunting for, for people who don't align with them, and it's, it's incredible to see, like, I never thought I would get to see something like what we saw, uh, in Star Wars on the big screen, and Vader, Vader is just, like, we love to hate him, and we hate to love him, you know, I, I just... Oh, it's so incredible. He was so menacing in this episode. He, he brings a presence to Star Wars like, like none other. But I really firmly believe in just let people enjoy the things that they enjoy. Let people dislike the things that they, they dislike. Like, we're all going to have stuff that we dislike about Star Wars. We're all going to have stuff that we love about Star Wars. I apologize for the noise, by the way. I have no idea how this audio is going to come out. Uh, 
this is my first time doing any sort of ranting video like this for YouTube. I've tried a couple times in the past. I'm not sure if I'm going to privatize those yet. But, um, yeah, really, like, a few years ago, I wanted to do something like uh, a Lego review channel. And I'm listening to a lot of Lego reviews and stuff. I love that community. I love the Star Wars community, but I think all communities ha can have some toxic fandom in them. And that's not really what I want to talk about right now. Uh, so, yeah, Vader is so fucking incredible in this episode. Uh, I don't even know where to start with it. Just the, the, the creators of this, they really know how to utilize Vader's dialogue because in the original trilogy, uh, Vader was, was known for only speaking when he needed to speak. You know, I really feel like this, uh, this episode it brought back something to the effect of Vader, he's, he knows, like, what to say and when to say it. As villainous as he is, he knows what to say and when to say it. And the fact that he brought up things like, you should have killing, you should have killing, you, <laughs> I can't speak, uh, you should have killed me when you had the chance. It's just perfect. It nails everything. I, I love it. Um, I love the fact that Hayden Christensen's back and that they're using uh, voice modulators to, to bring back uh, James Earl Jones, kind of like what they did with Luke in The Mandalorian. Uh, it, it's so cool, man. I, I just love it. Um, I'm going to keep repeating myself here. I'm, I'm, I'm just rambling at this point. But again, I want to get some stuff out there. I feel like I have a voice in this community. And, I don't know, there's, there's just some spark in me. We will be the spark that will light the fire, that will start a YouTube channel, you know? I have no idea where this is going to lead, but we're going to try it. We're going to try it. Um, so, anyways. Uh, oh, oh, yes, yes. What I wanted to talk about was Kenobi. I'll get to Vader in a bit, because I think I didn't touch on everything I wanted to touch on. But, obviously, starting off with Kenobi, I think it was really cool how he and Leia were wandering in what looked to be the Joshua Tree National Forest. They were um, obviously hiding from the Empire, and Kenobi, like, he needs to get Leia off-world. I'm not sure why exactly they were on that mining planet, but it was cool to see nonetheless. Um, just another desert, of course, in the Star Wars universe, but um, it was still cool to see, and... Yeah, so they, they hitch a ride on this, like, tractor trailer, basically, which I think the guy that played the Mole Man or whoever he was had to be Seth Rogen, right? I'm not wrong about that. Disney's using Seth Rogen like they did for the live-action Lion King, which I never saw, but I really like that he was in uh, the Chip and Dale movie. That looked really funny. Um, what else? Yeah, so they hitch a ride with Seth Rogen, Mole Man, and uh, they show the Imperial logo on this, like, uh, painted strip of cloth. And it's, it's very reminiscent of what would have been, like, a Nazi uh, swastika or another Nazi insignia, you know. Uh, so you already know that, like, shit's going to go down when, when they get on, on this ride. Even though, like, nobody is with them yet. Nobody's with Leia or Kenobi. It, it's like, um, except for Seth Rogen, who's dri driving the, the, uh, the tr truck, um, and, like, they, they start making some small talk and whatnot, and, and, uh, uh, I don't remember what was said, but Seth Rogen's character is, is like, oh, yeah, it's, uh, I, we, or no, it's, it's Leia that says, uh, yeah, we love the Empire, just trying to, you know, cover their tracks and whatnot, and Seth Rogen, he's making small talk, like an Uber driver, kind of, in the, in the back, uh, to the back, people in the back, and he's like, yeah, it's, it's nice to meet like-minded people, you know, <laughs> which, oh my gosh, if that's not speaking to some of the stuff that's just going on in the world, in our country right now, so, it's, it's really funny, but, um, they stop at an Imperial check, or, I remember, 
eventually like they pick up some stormtroopers and they're they're driving to an imperial checkpoint uh, so that the stormtroopers can get off and, and whatnot and um, the stormtroopers they they start interrogating Le Leia and Obi-Wan and again the creators of this are just masterful in the way that they shape the dialogue and what's going on, the situations that are going on. I didn't get as much of it in the first two episodes. Um, like, I le obviously, I liked seeing Obi-Wan looking over Luke, and I have a love-hate relationship with the Inquisitors. I can talk about them uh, later on, but I love seeing uh, Reva. I think she's incredible. People need to stop hating on her. Um, that's another discussion. I won't ramble on about, <clears throat> but let's see, what, what else? Yeah, so they're at the Imperial Checkpoint, and I, I loved, oh, yes, yes, the, the dialogue between Leia, the Stormtroopers, and Obi-Wan, it's really, like, masterfully undercover dialogue, like, we can't be found out, we stay hidden, uh, stuff that the first episode and the second episode were hinting at when uh, Obi-Wan says things like, or to the, to the one rogue Jedi, not the fake Jedi on, on that planet, but the, or the rogue Jedi on Tatooine, uh, who goes like, it, it is you, Obi-Wan, and Obi-Wan's to him like, we need to stay hidden, you can't, you can't uh, be putting yourself out there like this, you need to stay hidden. Because that's the stuff that would be going on uh, back in Nazi Germany. Like, as much as some people may want to deny it, and I'm not trying to say that Star Wars is all about, uh, like, fighting against Nazis and whatnot, but it's a big, big part of it. Like, the Empire is Nazi Germany. And so, obviously, the Imperial officers, the Inquisitors, the Stormtroopers, they're all different ranks of these of this fascist re regime. And, like, it's weird to say, but, like, we love... We love to hate it, and we hate to love it. Like, just like Vader, they really brought a, a, a Nazi presence to... Uh, to these, these characters that we obviously knew they were supposed to evoke, but this episode, man, it feels, it feels like, like, the Nazis, because, uh, like, Vader goes in to this town trying to, to draw, draw Obi-Wan out, or, I'll finish with the checkpoint, actually, so they, they get to the, the, uh, checkpoint, and they start fighting with these stormtroopers after, uh, Obi-Wan uh, is found out, kind of, like he messes up uh, Leia's name, and that was some al also some really cool dialogue, because it, uh, it just shows, like, like uh, the way in which, uh, God, I'm, I'm blanking, I'm gonna hopefully fix some of this in editing, you guys, but it, it uh, Obi-Wan, or, or Leia says to Obi-Wan, like, uh, are you really, are, are you actually my real father? And I did not expect them to address that kind of thing in an Obi-Wan show or any Star Wars content, for that matter. Um, which, just the way they get out of it, um, the way they get out of talking with storm, the Stormtroopers, it's like uh, Obi-Wan says, well, she reminds me of, of her mother. Um, and obviously, yes, Obi-Wan knew Padme, like, intimately, or <laughs> hopefully not intimately, although in, in Revenge of the Sith, like, it was hinted at that Anakin was was thinking that Padme and, and Obi-Wan were actually together, which that could have been explored a bit better in Revenge of the Sith, because it's a really cool and interesting plot thread. But, um, yeah, so Leia and Obi-Wan get to talking about... Uh, about that, and he's like, even though I'm not your real father, like, uh, I am here to protect you, and I'm here to take you back to your, your, uh, adopted father, and whatnot, and so they end up fighting with the stormtroopers, uh, 
because Obi-Wan messes up Leia's name. And it's just, it's so cool. I mean, the fight is pretty generic. I didn't expect to, to see Obi-Wan using a blaster at that point. Obviously, he doesn't want to give himself away, but, you know, like, like I said, the little attention to detail references. So I wonder if this is another moment where Obi-Wan is, is like, not as clumsy or random as a blaster. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where am I? Yeah, so... Obi-Wan, he ends up shooting a few stormtroopers, but then he shoots this one one stormtrooper who's on this ledge of the Imperial inspection gate. And, oh my god, I had to replay the scene at least twice because, uh, oh my god, they, they showed a stormtrooper getting cut in half by a laser grid. Who thinks up with, of this stuff? Who thinks up of that? Like, just as a moment in Star Wars history, that is incredible. You cannot watch all of this stuff if you really want to, not engage with the fandom, but that was a moment. That was incredible. And there's more amazing moments to come because uh, Vader, he goes, he goes and he, he, he uh, what does he do? Yeah, so Leia, Leia and Obi-Wan, they're, they're hiding out, you know, there's this Imperial defector who, uh, she, she helps Obi-Wan and Leia hide, like, they, they take her, they, t she takes them to, uh, to this village, and basically it, it's, like, they, they find another, uh, person who's willing to risk everything to, to help them. A, a, a Nazi defector, basically. And uh, so she takes them in. I don't remember what exactly she does with them, but um, she, like, tries to give them safe passage. And uh, you see it, you end up seeing it in Obi-Wan's eyes, like the, like the most recent episode. You end up seeing in it that... Uh, oh my god, oh shit! Vader is back! He's here, and you... Just like, if any of you are trying to make a, a Star Wars fan film or create a story, I don't know how much better you could do it, because the introductions of Vader, the reintroductions of Vader, kind of like Rogue One, are just amazing. They're, they're, they're hair-raising, they're spine-tingling, you're on the end, edge of your seat, it's just incredible. Uh, so, we see Vader's boots on the ground, like, we hear his breathing, obviously. They really know how to make him sound intimidating. Um, and so it's... Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, because we, we we see his boots. It pans up. You see his the, the lights on his belt and his, his chest plate. And then you see his face. And he's walking out. And... Um, oh, the way they did this was so cool. He knows. He knows that Obi-Wan is there on uh, on that planet and somewhere in this village. He's like, I'm coming for you, Obi-Wan. At least that's what he's thinking. I was talking to my brother. I was like, <laughs> I'm sure some fanboys would, would, would have rather wanted Vader while he's hunting down Obi-Wan to, to be like, I'm looking for you, Obi-Wan. I'm here, Obi-Wan. I'm looking for you. I'm gonna get you. But he doesn't do that, and it's smart. It's smart of these creators to do things like that. When they get into the lightsaber fight, he does say something uh, reminiscent of uh, Vader drawing Luke out on the Death Star, or the second Death Star, uh, when they're when they have their lightsaber battle and Luke refuses to fight. But, um, yeah, so Obi-Wan's, like, he's, he's trembling, he's like, oh shit, how am I going to get out of this kind of thing. And driving is the most important. I have no idea how many people vlog while they are driving. Probably not the best idea. But I figured I'd give it a shot because I listen to a lot of audiobooks and uh, listen to, I listen to the radio sometimes. Um, and I, I just, I like to have something to think about while I'm driving, while I'm on my way to work get my thoughts out there. Uh, I figured might as well talk. I, I haven't tried this before. 
So again, I'm really making this for myself, but if, if you guys like the content, if anybody watches this, if anybody ends up watching it, I'll, uh, I'll keep doing it. Uh, I'll probably change it up here and there. On my phone, left off, I'm using a different camera if there's a uh, change in the quality. But I, uh, I was saying that I have a love-hate relationship with the Inquisitors. They feel like lackeys to Darth Vader when I don't think Darth Vader should have lackeys. Uh, they are still cool though. And uh, for some people, I'm probably not as much a good Star Wars fan if I don't read all of the material and everything, consume everything, love everything. But, or, um, but I read, I've been rereading the Kobe book and I listened to the audiobook in preparation for the series and it's been awesome. I, I, uh, I want to listen and reread Darth Plagueis. I haven't read too much else or listened to too much else. Uh, I read a lot of the comics and everything, but um, I, I read, or yeah, I read, I read Lost Stars, which was okay, and I, I read, um, a couple years ago I read, why am I blanking on the name? Bloodline, got it, I couldn't remember the name, with Leia. Which was very cool. I was expecting more when I when I went into that book though, I was expecting more of like Leia not just Leia being a politician. I I wanted I really wanted to see Ben's reaction because going into that book I was told that like oh uh, Ben learns that he's he's from Vader and it's a few year or uh, a few years before uh, the Force Awakens and it's part of the reason that he turns to the dark side. And the only real mention we get of it is, is Leia realizing that Ben is going to find out. Uh, and she's not going to be the one to tell him. Spoilers. <laughs> if you haven't read that. But um, it's still a fun book. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. I'd also definitely recommend Kenobi and uh, Darth Plagueis because those are also very fun books. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, so I was talking about the, the Grand Inquisitor, like, uh, he was, he was cool in, in Rebels and stuff. I definitely want him, wanted, like, like a lot of people, I wanted him to be a bit more like, uh, the way he looks and sounds in Rebels, uh, even though it's not a necessity for me, like, I still think he, he's a very commanding presence in, uh, in the Kenobi series, obviously until he died, or died, quote unquote, um, but there are worse fates than death, so we'll see what happens there. I know it's divisive, I, it, oh yes, that's what I was talking about. So I was, I, again, I don't know if the footage cut out, but I was talking about how I, I can't really get into certain characters, like, um, a lot of the ancillary characters, like Quinlan Voss and uh, just background characters. Like to me, the Inquisitors are more as background characters. I don't need centralized stories around them. I don't need them to act in place of Vader, you know. Because what I want to see and what we were starting to get already is Vader hunting down Jedi. And we've seen some of it already with him just. Uh, Carefully looking for, looking for Luke, uh, not Luke, uh, for Obi Wan in uh, in that village, and it was incredible to see. And that's more of what I want to see. And I don't know if like Andor will deal with stuff like that. That's probably going to be more the politics of Star Wars, like the prequels. But we'll see what happens. I, I, I think that the people that that work on the aesthetics of Star Wars. For the most part, they just nail it out of the park. Because I was I was not excited for uh, Andor whatsoever when I when I heard they were making an Andor series. I'm like, really, an ancillary character from an ancillary movie? Why does every ancillary character need an ancillary spinoff? You know, I think that was my mindset. But um, if if they if they do Andor right, it will be a very cool more of that Rogue One feel of, of the Rebellion, because that's what I like about Rogue One, and, wow, 
is Jared. I am Iron... Wait. My name is Jared. I am Iron Batman. There you go. I like that one. My name is Jared and I am Iron Batman. My name is Jared and I am Iron Batman. I might start using that. How, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys like that one. Uh, my name is Jared. I am Iron Batman. And, and I should do like a... a I like Jeremy Jads. It like fizzles out. There's like a snap in my nose. It fades out. Something like that. So, we'll see. We'll see. 